What's going on, everybody? This is the Believe in Blazer podcast presented by Bet Online. I am your co-host, Steve Vaughn. I am with my other co-host, Tori Jones. We are here to bring you all the Blazer entertainment that your little heart desires. Tori, what's going on, my man? Not much, man. I play basketball for the first time in three weeks today. It didn't go well, Steven. I was playing against a former overseas pro. He played at Portland State. He was kind of like a poor man, Stephen Vaughn. And uh, I pulled both calves today. Mm. I went up for a little, like, left leg floater, pulled one calf. Or not pulled, cramped. Cramped is the proper term. I cramped up in both calves. Pulled one calf, or uh, cramped up in one calf on a floater. And then I got a fast break, and I was like, okay, I'm going to jump off the other leg since I just cramped up my left calf. I was going about 20%. Jumped off for a lay-in and cramped up my right calf. I feel very old right now. Is this how it feels? Uh, Yeah, it does. You need to take care of your body. You need to ice it up. Uh, Take a hot tub if you can. But yeah, definitely ice up. Ice bath. I advise ice bath there, Tori. That's uh, that's a key. That's a key thing. Dude, I I don't miss the days of ice baths. I have graduated from that. I got some fluids here, so I'll probably be sipping on stuff this entire recording. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to relax and... It was a rough experience for me. The thing is, is I wish I was a little bit younger because that's when ice baths became like more of the norm. Like when I played, like people were just kind of starting to ice bath and I Mm -hmm. felt like it would have been so much better for my body had I done it. But like I was still the generation of like, oh, you show up, warm up, stretch out a little bit and start playing. And then after the game, just, you know, just get your shoes on, go home. Like that's kind of what I did. My body is paying for it now. I wish I wish I was part of the ice bath generation. See, those gave me a different perspective on cold. Now cold is is nothing. Is nothing. It's still nothing. I can go out in shorts and a t-shirt in the weather we're having right now in the Portland area. I'm fine because I know what true cold feels like. Dude, I love I love like going to the coast and have it be ice cold water and like going in it. I don't know why. I just love it. Like I'm cool with it. So, uh, yeah, so you go back and you play today. You know, what were you doing? Hitting threes, scoring points. Like, you know, I would have set your over-under maybe like 15 and a half points, uh, one and a half threes. What were you hitting? Uh, more than one and a half. Uh, shot was kind of streaky. But if I make one, I'm making two, Steve. And if I miss one, I'm missing two. That's just the way I am. Um, but more than anything, you would have been proud of my passing. Oh. Uh, Josh Hart out there. Uh, I wish I would have watched the footage from someone else better, but that's okay. But remember, <laughs> next time uh, Tori goes out and play, maybe he makes a bet on his props. Maybe, you know, if he hits one, he's gonna make two, and you could do that at Bet Online. Not really, oh, but yeah. bet, but Bet Online is. I crazy. wish I, that would <laughs> that would be sweet. City League Bet Online props, I'd be down with that. But uh, remember, basketball is back. Bet Online it remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player name, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events, whether that's the NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. Hopefully, one day, City League. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE. That is promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so, Tori, let's just get into it a little bit. Had a little fun there with your City League experience. Um, Portland Trailblazers, they uh, played a couple games past week, started uh, to win a few. Damian Lillard is back. Uh, He came back against the Pacers on Sunday. I was in attendance for that game, so that was a lot of fun. But uh, I want to get your your point of view on how Dame looked. Uh, I was really not worried about how he looks because, you know, I think if Dame's going to play, he's going to be fine. But coming off a second calf injury, you wanted to see some explosiveness. I want to get your take on how you thought Dame looked in his return uh, back to the lineup against the Pacers on Sunday. He looked sharp, man. It's hard to really judge it because I think he went out there not really – looking to force things. Jeremy and Ant had played really well and continuing to play really well in the past couple of games. So he's just going in, um, trying to fit in and get his legs under him and not push things too hard, especially with three days off after this. But he looked sharp. He looked quick. He didn't really drive a whole lot, shot a lot of threes. Looked good on threes, five for ten. You'll take that any day from him. Um, But he looked like he had a little bit more burst than he did during the last stretch he played. And if you've heard some of his interviews, it seemed like 
he didn't come back 100% from the first calf strain that he dealt with. Like, he was, he said he was pushing it super hard instead of giving it the rest it needed, and it maybe didn't get back to 100%. This time, it seems like he's 100%, and he looked pretty good out there. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I thought that he may have came back a little early the first time, where this time it looked like he was ready to go from the get-go. Like, from the start, he looked like Damian Lillard. We expected him. And I think more importantly, like, he was enough of a threat, and he was, you know, great off the ball. So he was looking for that three-point shot that he always does. But he was, you know, he looked good and was driving enough where he created open shots for Jeremy Grant. I know Jeremy Grant went three of ten from deep on Sunday, but, like, I mean, Tori, he had wide open threes that he was just missing mm-hmm. and he was getting really frustrated with himself. And I think, you know, if you're a Blazers fan, you're going to take that all day with the way Jeremy Grant's been shooting the basketball. I mean, 46% from behind the arc, you're going to take wide open threes out of him. And then Amphrey Simons, third quarter again, he went off. And I think a lot of it is because of Dane, just the threat of him on the court really made it a lot easier for the other guys uh, to play off of him. So I thought it was a really good return for Dame. And I'm looking forward to see how he reacts uh, going forward. Hopefully that calf can stay pretty healthy. Yeah, and I think it was obvious without Dame how badly this team needed that extra <clears throat> shot creator. Somebody that could not only pass the ball, but score on their own just to take some of that pressure off. Because Jeremy Grant and Anthony Simons have been carrying this offense for a couple weeks now, playing phenomenal basketball. Both of them were nominees for player of the week. That's how good they're playing. But outside of that, there just hasn't been enough shooting around those guys We saw Jeremy Grant foul out against the Clippers as a part of that choke job, and Anthony Simons ended with a lineup that included Josh Hart, Trendon Watford, one of the big men who was Nurkic or Eubanks, and then you had Justice Winslow out there. That's three guys that don't really shoot, and another guy that can shoot but doesn't really want to shoot. That's, of course, Josh Hart. So the spacing was bad in that game. Anthony Simons tried to drive lane, got blocked a couple times, and I was just sitting there like, man, if we just had even a shooter let alone a guy like Damian Lillard that can go out there and do the things he does on a nightly basis. That would help out Jeremy and Anthony Simon so much more. But we're talking about somebody helping those guys out. That's how good those guys have been. It's kind of a weird conversation talking about Dame coming back and providing those two guys the help that they need. <laughs> Normally it's who can help Dame. That is true. It is. It's, it's nice to, it's nice to do, right? Like it's nice to hear that and say that. Cause it is true. Like, that is been real life this year is Dame is just helping them and they're helping Dame. Like it's, it's, there is a little bit of a teamwork this year, which I do like. And it seems like if this team is healthy, like they are that much better, but they can still win even without Dame. But you are right also Tori in the fact that they need another ball handler, just another player that can play. And the way they do that is the trade deadline or just traded in general. Uh, so let's bring up this. You brought up a tweet today. Just out of nowhere, out of the blue. I don't know what you're thinking about. You just brought it up just because you did what you do. <laughs> I and, think my uh, Twitter group chat motivated this one, but I don't remember, man. I, a lot of my tweets, half my tweets, I don't remember the next day, all right? I mean, this is uh, <laughs> this is like a going segment. Just what did Tori tweet? Now, I'm not even mad about this one. Um, I thought it was good. Like, it's a good conversation, good topic. But you just said hot take. Every time, every Simon straight up for Kevin Durant is fair value for Brooklyn. And then he said you wouldn't do it. Um, explain your reasoning on both of those, because I don't necessarily agree with you, but um, I, I, I don't think it's out of the question. Like, it's not crazy to think what you said and believe it. So tell me what you're thinking on that. Okay, there's many things that go into this. We had a conversation on a previous podcast. I think it was about a month ago, maybe a little bit earlier, but... We talked about how the NBA is more wide open and it's less about just accumulating as much star power as possible and it's more about having a better, more cohesive team. The first part of this, Stephen, is I truly think, and I want your answer to this, I truly think Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons, and Jeremy Grant are a good enough big three where if you surround them with the right role players, that team can contend. I don't agree with you. Why not? Uh, I, I think they just need to be better. Like, I don't think, I just think that that team is going to have trouble in the playoffs. Um, I just don't think that they're good enough. I mean, look at the teams that were in the playoffs last season and the best players on that, those teams. I mean, like they're all really good players, but I just, I just don't think that that's a good enough team to win an NBA championship. Even if you surround them with, you know, a 
bunch of talent. I mean, that would be the, that would be the only thing. If you could surround them with like five other guys that are basically at the Jeremy Grant level. Like I think for those NBA finals teams, those NBA championship teams, like a lot of the role players are already at like the Jeremy Grant level. I think Jeremy Grant is going to regress at some point this season. He's not going to shoot as well as he has. He's not going to be as good as he's been this year, but he's been awesome. He's been at an all-star level. I don't think he's necessarily an all-star caliber player. Uh, so I just don't think that they're, that's a talented enough team to win a championship. I think it's a good enough team to make the playoffs, but I just don't think it's talented enough to win the finals. I think it's talented enough to contend because that was my whole point with the conversation we had a, a few weeks ago was um, it's just about having a cohesive a cohesive roster around a couple of stars. It's having guys that can take over games offensively and knock down shots and then just having defensive players around them to have a good enough defense. Offensively, I wouldn't want to face that Portland Trailblazers team in a playoff series. There's no way. You look at what Dame's done in the past, but then you have Anthony Simons, who at this point, I'm ready to say he's better in, better in a Blazer uniform than CJ McCollum ever was. And then you have the best forward that Dame's played with since the Marcus Aldridge. But honestly, with how good Jeremy Grant's been this season, you could say he's a better complement to Damian Lillard as that third guy than LaMarcus Aldridge would have been as a third guy. Uh, he's a better three-point shooter, lights-out guy. Like, I think Jeremy Grant is the perfect third scorer because he can take over games when he needs to. He can finish inside. Um, you know, he's had a lot of little turnaround fadeaways to bail out the offense when he's gotten in trouble lately. But then he gets a ton of open catch and shoot threes. Yeah, I don't expect him to shoot 46, 47% on the season, but he has good form and he's getting maybe the best three-point looks he's ever gotten in his, in his career. So you have to stop that. Four times out of seven in a playoff series, that's going to be difficult to do. If you have shooters around them, maybe another guy that can create, a guy that can push the pace. Like, offensively, this team's going to be a problem. I have no worries about this big three with Dame, Ant, and Grant being good enough offensively to contend. The question mark, of course, is, is defensively for me. But that's where you got to surround them with the right world players, guys that can defend. Hopefully, Gary Payton the second comes back uh, at some point. Because I think... Dame's made some strides defensively this year. Ant, as part of his 45-point game in Utah, came up with some huge defensive plays in that game. You don't expect them to consistently defend. You just need moments from those guys. That's what other players on the roster are supposed to do. And then Grant, the problem is he's having to guard guards, and he should be guarding guards. That's a Chauncey thing. And also, you probably need another point of attack defender. But goes back to my original point. Surround them with the right role players, Steven. I truly think this team can t contend. And a big part of that is because Anthony Simons is playing like a borderline superstar lately. He's averaged almost 30 points per game without Dame, six assists. With Dame, obviously, he's not going to score as much, but he's a great catch-and-shoot guy. He can play off the ball. He was utilized off the ball, got a dunk off a dime from Yusuf Nurkic recently. Like, he's, he's, a, he's a true threat off the ball as well. I think he can play with or without the ball. Um, he's averaging 25 points per game this season and his shooting is almost back up to 40 percent he's been doing it efficiently he's getting to the line more and the dude's only 23 years old i expect him to get better as the season goes on and i expect him to be even better next year you look at anthony simons at 23 years old and you look at damian lillard when he was 23 years old anthony simons is a better player than Dame was when he was 23 years old so this kind of segues back to the the conversation about you know, KD, and we can get into more of that. But I truly think this big three is good enough if they have the right talent around them because all three of them are high enough level scorers. Ant can be a secondary distributor. Dame can be that main guy. And the offense that they're running, like, they moved the ball great last game. If they do that, I don't know how you guard them. Yeah, Ant's been awesome this year. I mean, he's got those numbers up, to, like you said, almost 25 a game. Uh, shooting over 10 threes a game at right at 40%. I mean, just below. So he's got the percentages back up, hitting four threes a game. I mean, he's been awesome. He's been really good on the offensive side uh, this season. I think my hang up on this, Tory is the fact that when I look at the best teams and a lot of times they're best players. And I know you look at like the, the Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry, not a great defender. Luka Doncic, not a great defender. But for the most part, when you look at the best teams and the you know the contenders on these teams, I think their best players are solid defenders and are going to give solid effort on that side of the ball night in and night out and do a really good job. I'm not sold on the Portland Trailblazers doing that with Ant or Dame. 
And even Jeremy Grant, you've talked about this numerous times. His on-ball defense is okay, but when he has to run through screens, it's not great. But when you have to put all three of them out there, I mean, what do you? I mean, are you going to surround him with two just elite, elite defenders and then leave the offensive side alone? Like, I think that's a hard balancing act. And I just think that maybe I'm not. I like Jeremy Grant. He's been a really good player. I don't know that I necessarily buy him as like a leader on an NBA Finals team. Maybe I'm wrong on that. And maybe well, I'm is the third guy a leader? Is the third guy a leader? You know what I mean? That's why I think that's the best role for him. I wouldn't be comfortable with him being the number one or number two guy, but as the number three guy, I think that's perfect. Because all he has to do is catch and shoot and attack closeouts and cut. And then at times when he gets hot, he can make plays off the dribble, and he will. But he's played within the confines of that third role and scored super efficiently. But he also gets to the free throw line. And he drives the ball so hard, I think he would get to the free throw line in the playoffs. Like... When he gets to the free throw line, it's not ticky-tack stuff, you know, stuff like Dame does. He'll drive into somebody and kind of throw his arms up and get a foul call. He's getting fouled because he's driving and he's a problem when he drives. Uh, so I think just he, the opportunities he's gotten, he's built for. You're not going to give him the ball and ISO him against, you know, a Jason Tatum what, or whatever, you know, like a, a decent defensive player and say, okay, go get us 40. I also wouldn't be shocked if he ISO'd and got us 40. He's done it this year. Um, you know, he, he got 44. He shot a ton of free throws against uh, the Knicks in that game. But he's had some high-level performances scoring off the dribble. So, you know, he just has to pick his spots. I think he plays really well off, off Dame and Ant. So that's kind of my thing. But as far as the defense goes, does it matter if it's your number one guy or your number four guy who's the really good defensive player? I just think if you're going to throw out, because you named those top three guys, I mean, just arbitrary big three, right? It doesn't really matter. Those big two, big three, whatever. But you name those big three as the Blazers. Like, I don't think any of them are great defenders. And so when you have all three on the court, which you're going to do in the playoffs, you're already going to have, at best, two good defenders on that team. Yeah. I mean, my whole my whole thing, though, is Golden State won it last year. Steph's not a good defender. Klay Thompson in the past has been a really good defender. I don't think he's a really good defender anymore. I think he's solid, just like you'd say the same about Jeremy Grant. But who's the third member of their big three? People say Draymond, but that dude don't doesn't. He averages six points per game, right? He's basically a role player. He passes the ball well, and he defends at a super high level. You also got Andrew Wiggins, who has turned himself into a, a good defender, but I wouldn't say he's, like, elite. And then you got Kevon Looney with them. The thing is, is they could sub in a Gary Payton the second, and you change the complexion of the game from the defense. end. We, now we have Gary Payton the second. That's where it's just, like, if you just have the right role players, I think with those three, if you have two good defenders with them, I think that can be just good enough defensively. And then if you have pieces off the bench that you can throw in and give different looks, and if things aren't going well defensively, you can make an early substitution, then I, I, I think that's good enough because I don't think any of the top teams in the NBA this year are truly, like, unbeatable. Like, I think this team can hang with anyone if everything's clicking and they have the right pieces around those three. So that that's where, that's where I come off with, I think this can be good enough. But in the future... As Anthony Simons continues to grow, and maybe you throw Shaden Sharp into that mix in a couple of years, look out. That's that's where that's what really has me excited, um, and that's why I wouldn't do do Ant for KD right now. It's probably better this year. In the next five years, I want to maximize the Blazers' chance to win a championship. I feel like with Ant still being twenty three years old, with Shaden Sharp having the potential he has. I feel like if you give those guys two or three years and Damian Lillard's still here and maybe not quite at the same level he is now, but those two guys continue to ascend, especially Shaden Sharp, I think you might have just as good, if not a better chance to win two, three years from now as you do right now. So if you're trying for Kevin Durant, you're basically giving up on anything like more than a couple years down the road. And also, I don't think he really makes as much of a difference as people think. Anthony Simons is more of a three-point shooter, more of a catch-and-shoot guy. I actually think Anthony Simons is better playing off the ball, off of Dame, off of Jeremy Grant, than KD would. But also, KD's not a point-of-attack defender. Yeah, he makes our def defense better, but he's much like Jeremy Grant. He's more of a team guy, play around the rim, like play off the ball, use his length in that, than he is a guy that you're going to put up against a good guard and he's going to lock him down. So that was the thought behind my tweet. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, so you are you saying that... <sighs> okay. I understand where you're coming from here. 
Uh, but to get a Kevin Durant, like Anthony Simons has been awesome. And he has the potential to be a really, really good player, all-star level type player. Shane Sharp, same as There it is. I love Shane Sharp. Nah, okay. Uh, He's I averaging love- 25 and four and a half. Is that not an all-star caliber player? What, does he have to average 30? Like, where's the bar here? I mean, well, we, that's a different conversation. If you want to go through all the guards... I'll tell you who's better at guard than he is. But that's just that's a different conversation. Okay. I mean, he probably did, but, oh, Okay, hold on, Steve, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Side, side, side conversation. Yeah. All-star caliber, does that mean he has to make the all-star game? Like, the West has better guard play than the East, in my opinion. Like, Zach Levine will probably still find his way into the all-star game. He's not having a better season than Anthony Simons is right now. Right, but They're yeah. having like similar seasons, but because he plays in the East, he's going to make the game. Whereas since Anthony Simons plays in the West and you got Ja Morant, Luka Doncic, Steph Curry, Devin Booker, Shea Gilgis Alexander has been absolutely insane this year. And then Dame, right? Like De'Aaron Fox. De'Aaron Fox in Sacramento is winning this year. Like, yeah, he's probably not going to make the game, but he's an all-star level player. Right, in the Eastern Conference, but guess what? The Blazers in the Western Conference. And well, they that's ha- why they I say all-star level. But they got to get out of the West. And if he's if he's the 10th best guard in the West, Tori, there's nine guys that are better than him that they have to overcome at different positions. When you're going into a playoff series, like, yeah, Anthony Simons is playoff level or all-star level, and he's really good, but, like, they're not as talented as the team they're playing. The thing is, is, like, you're... I feel like you're viewing it from a detractive standpoint. Like... You think about all the good guard talent. There's other guards in the West that start that are maybe on playoff teams that are nothing special. The gap between them and anyone they're going against is huge. On any given night, Anthony Simons can can outplay guys that are averaging 25, 30 points per game and absolutely insane. And he's not the number one guy. And you got Jeremy Grant, who's better than almost every starting four in the Western Conference. You probably, you know, Anthony Davis is insane. And, you know, there's a couple of guys he's not, but he's better than almost every starting four. And we're not even talking about Dame. No, I understand what you're saying. Anthony Simons has the ability to be the best guard on the court. He has the, best, he has the ability to be the best guard on the team, on the Blazers, this season. Like, that's how good he can be. I'm just saying, like, when it comes down to a playoff series, like, I want to have the best talent on the team, on the court, in the series. I don't think that the Blazers are going to have that if Anthony Simons is on the team compared to Kevin Durant, if you bring Kevin Durant to this team right now, they have a much better chance of making an NBA finals within the next year or two. I think Kevin Durant is one of the guys that you could throw into a playoff series and he's going to get tough buckets. We see in the playoffs games slow down. It's not about necessarily even about running plays. Like it turns into a lot of just ISO pick and roll ball. And that's what happened last year with the Celtics. They were making all these shots. All of a sudden, in the finals, they weren't hitting them. And then Golden State ran them out of, the, out of the gym. I think that happens in the playoffs where Dame has been stuck having to do everything by himself. At least with Kevin Durant, like, it's going to be a more efficient scorer next to Damian Lillard at all times. And you'll be able to throw him the ball and let him go numerous times in a row. I just think Kevin Durant is such a better player than Avery Simons at this moment that, like, I don't think the Blazers still. I don't think the Blazers win a championship with Kevin Durant and Damian Lillard. I think they're much closer. See, that's but that's but that's my thing. If you just focus on this year, obviously I would do it. Obviously Kevin Durant is better right now and would give us a better chance to win this year. But he's 34, has has dealt with major injuries. Like we better win it if you're gonna give up on a dude that it the way he's progressing right now is gonna be a superstar. For a good, like, six, seven-year period. He's already better than Damian Lillard was at 23 years old, right? So that becomes the question, and that's why I wanted to have this debate, is does it raise the chances enough this year that you're willing to give up on having a better chance three years down the line, right? Um, Like, Dame takes good care of his body. Yes, he's, uh, you know, had the injury last year, but he's been playing through that for five or six. Yeah, he's had the calf strains, you know, but like, yeah, he's probably going to be a little bit more banged up here or there. But I still think Dame will be at a high level two, three years from now. He takes great care of his body. He hasn't been injury prone. And, uh, you know, he's still one of the best shooters in the league. Smart player. Like, I think Dame will still be at a super high level three, four years from now. Kevin Durant, I can't say the same about because he's older and he's dealt with those injuries. So that's the thing is, is it enough where you're willing to give up on the chance three, four, five years down the line? For me, it's not because I think this team will truly have a chance three, four years down the line. Now, if this team didn't have Shaden Sharp, 
then that would maybe change my uh my thought process on this but when you throw in his potential i think this team will truly have a chance now if they surround this big three with the right role players but then especially like four you know three four five years from now if sharp develops like we think he can and if ant continues to ascend ascend like he's ascended the past couple of years how long does it take before Anthony Simons is the best player on the Trailblazers? Dude, it's hard to say because... Uh, is it this season? No, no. Because Dame, Dame, Dame gets to the line more than Ant. Um, Dame's craftier. Dame's still smarter. And when the playoffs do roll around, his experience... That's the one thing Ant doesn't really have on his, size, on his side. Dame's experience will help him out. And... Even if the stats are the same, Dame's still probably getting the best defensive player on the other team. But that is why it's so nice to have another another guard that can do the things Dame does. Because, you know, if you have a good defensive forward, they would go out and guard a Kevin Durant. And, you know, Kevin Durant would still get buckets on him. But it's it's tough to match up with two guards that do it at this level. And then if you have a good defensive forward, you've got to worry about Jeremy Grant as well. So, I think statistically playing next to Dame... Ant will be better than CJ was because he's a more pure shooter. I think he's better playing off the ball. Um, I, 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 I just honestly think he's a better player right now. But uh, he'll also get easier assignments. So it's going to be hard to judge that because Dame and Ant, while they're both very talented, Dame will still likely get more attention and harder defensive coverage than Ant will. So you can't just base it to statistically if they're having equal statistical seasons. Um, so I don't know, man. Short answer. Uh, I think in a couple of years, you could definitely see that. Because, dude, Ant's, Ant's just getting craftier. He's getting better. His ball handling looks better this year than it did last year. Looks even tighter. Like, he's 23 years old. You would expect him to improve. It's just so hard to predict. Because yeah. nobody would have predicted the improvement he's had in the past couple of years. Right. He's He's been great, and he's been improving even this season. Like, from the start of the year to now, he's been getting better. I just ask because, you know, I feel like – I find it interesting that you wouldn't want to trade for Kevin Durant. I think even you would say Kevin Durant is a better player than Anthony Simons. I think you talked about – you think the Blazers could compete for a championship or be contenders with the three that they have. But if you brought in Kevin Durant, in theory, they would be even better, right? Like you're getting a yeah, better – Yeah, but not enough in my opinion. So you that's where I get off of it. It's not enough to sacrifice the stuff three, four, or five years down the line. Well, then how good, how 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 are they contenders right now? Then without they're contenders without right Kevin now. Durant, then why would you not want to improve your team? Why would you not want to go for it? Because I think what they have is enough. I don't think Kevin Durant. I think he makes the team better, but not enough to where. Because winning a championship is hard. Just because they can win it, Stephen, doesn't mean they're going to. I want five six cracks at it rather than two right like that's just you know five you have five six cracks at something you're much more likely to attain it so that's the thing is is even if the team would be better right now with kevin durant it has to be better by enough to 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 bridge the gap between giving up on the chances in the future two two really good cracks or five to six okay cracks but is it okay, Cracks? If you have this dude that at 23 years old is better than Damian Lillard how, was at 23. How do you think, is Anthony Simons going to be better than Damian Lillard in his career? I can't rule it out because he's better than Dame was at 23, man. You're, like, what? Are you, are what? you telling me he's going to be a top 75 player of all time? Dude, I can't rule anything out because at Dame at 23, if you said he's going to be a top 75 player of all time, he's averaging 20 a game. Obviously, People would say, yeah. oh, that's a, such a bold hot take, right? But then he's become a top 75 player, right? The thing is, Ant has Dame as a mentor. Physically, I don't think there's anything that Dame can do that Ant can't achieve. I think Ant maybe is even a little bit more athletic, right? And I think he could end up being a better shooter than Dame has been, which is maybe a hot take. Dame has, you know, all that range and whatnot. But, dude, his shot is so pure. It's so quick. Like... He's averaging, you know, 4.2 makes per game, shooting over 10 a game. And it's, it's like, I, I don't know, man. I can't roll out anything with Anthony Simons. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just where we differ, differ a little bit. I think I'm less on Anthony Simons than you are. And um, 
That's fair. Like he's been really good. Like I can't, I can't knock him. I can't, I can't be negative to him. Like he's been really good this season, especially the last few games. He's been awesome. I just think Dame is a much more explosive athlete. Like when he has the ball, it's it's explosion, not necessarily just you know the long strides and like the pure athleticism. Like Avery Simons is a better jumper than Dame, but Dame I think is a more explosive athlete to get to his spots, and that's when you see him get to the free throw line. It's an interesting conversation. I uh, I just think that they're much closer if they made a trade for Kevin Durant right now. But uh, I understand what you're saying because the 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 team of Shaden Sharp. Anthony Simons in the future, like that could be deadly. Uh, one more question for you on this front here. I asked you when Anthony Simons could be better than Dame. Who has more potential between Shaden Sharp and Anthony Simons? <laughs> oh, that's tough because Shaden Sharp is actually contributing at times at 19 where Anthony Simons didn't. That's where it gets tricky extrapolating out like, well, Ant is better than Dame at 23. And Sharp, you could probably make the case that he was better than Ant at 19. Let me put it, let me so put it this way. You let know what put, I mean? Like, let me put it this way. Let's say the Blazers have to trade for Kevin Durant. It's a have to. Who are you throwing in the trade? Anthony Simons or Shaden Sharp? I'm throwing Shaden Sharp. Because you're only trading for Kevin Durant to try and win in the next two years. Which of those two pieces is going to help you more in the next two years? You're already throwing away some of the future. And I would rather have... Anthony Simons, then Shaden Sharp, because we know he can play at a star level. With Sharp, it's like, well, he might be a superstar one day, or he might be a bench scorer. Like, we don't really know. I'm confident in his upside, but that's his upside. That's not his downside. There is some downside. Like, we don't know. If if you knew he was going to be a superstar, he would have been drafted number one overall. So that's the thing, is I'd rather easily have Anthony Simons on this team than a Shaden Sharp. But uh, Shaden Sharp makes me more bullish on the future. Who do you think could get more trade value, Anthony Simons or Shaden Sharp? Anthony Simons, man. Like, you think about it. If you're is looking it, to... Sp- I thought, it was Sha- I thought to- Shaden Sharp was the answer. No, it's Anthony Simons. Dude, if you're looking to start a rebuild, or you're just looking for a high-level guard that can play point or shooting guard... Right, like the Pelicans last year were looking for a high-level guard, right? But they're also a young team, so they would have loved to have a have a young guard. If if I can pitch you without you knowing who it is, a 23-year-old that's averaging almost 25 a game when he's the lead guard this season, he's been averaging like 29 a game. He can pass the ball. He's averaging four and a half assists when he's the lead guard. He's averaging six. He's, uh, you know, an explosive jumper, three-level scorer, getting better at attacking the rim and finishing. And he's one of the top three-point shooters in the league because he's lethal both off the catch and off the dribble and has a lightning quick release. I mean, that guy is uh, is an enormous trade ship. Like, I don't think, and this this was the first tweet I had, I don't think Brooklyn would be able to get as good of a young star back for Kevin Durant as an Anthony Simons. No, I don't think you're wrong. I think that's about... That's why I think it's fair value. Yeah, I think they could... That's about as good as they can get. Um... Is it wrong to think that I want more out of Anthony Simons? What do you mean? I want to see him become a better playmaker. I want to see him make his teammates even better. I don't think he makes his teammates very much better. I think he right now Well, is, what does that mean? Like, Damian Lillard doesn't even necessarily average a lot of assists. What his, For his career, he's six and a half, just a little over that. I think he makes his teammates a lot better. I don't think Anthony Simons makes his teammates better. Well, I think he right now, he's just a scorer that gets his own buckets, and that's it. Like, he passes, you, he passes when he has to. Yeah, can you give me an example of, like, making teammates better, quote-unquote? I just think it's by making the right play. I, I don't think Avery Simons makes the right play all the time. I think he looks to shoot and looks to score rather than just read the defense and make the play. Um, I mean, you could make the case that he's more of a combo guard than a point guard, but the, the dude is... The dude is averaging four and a half assists per game. He makes some really impressive passes. There's times where he'll make a pass where it's like, oh, I don't think Dame is making that pass or, you know, making that play. And there's times, vice versa, where Dame will make a play that I don't think Ant is. But that's the thing is we've seen Dame. He's 32 years old. We've seen him do that for years. Ant is still young. He he hasn't even started for a full NBA season. The talent is obvious, right? He's obviously, like, extremely talented. You know, this isn't a knock on him, but... He doesn't have much experience in a starting role. So that's the thing is I just say give him time to figure out that level of thinking on the basketball court, it's, that level of reading the game. I mean, it's not even assist numbers, right? Like Russell Westbrook averages a lot of assists. He doesn't make his teammates better. Like I think it's just one of those things when you're watching the game, like I want him 
to make his teammates better. That's all I, that's the only way I can explain it is like, I watch it. I'm like, all right, well, he's getting his buckets. I want to see him get someone else a bucket, but like, it just doesn't, it doesn't look as natural as I want it to be. And maybe I'm just being a little too hard on him. Well, yeah, and, I'll, I'll say and this. I, I think it will get better. Like, I'm not saying this, but it's definitely gotten better this season. Um, I think that's just where I'm a little more down on him than you are. And I think he's awesome at 23 years old. Like, I think this is a better season than I thought he would have. Like he has definitely uh, outdone my expectations. I, I just feel weird that I want more out of him. Like, I feel like if the Blazers are really truly to take this next step, like he's got to be on that Dame level. And I don't think he's really close. A, a year and a half ago, people had the conversation that it can't be a point guard at all. He was coming off his second season where he was basically just a shooter, didn't handle the ball much, didn't run a ton of pick and roll, and never made the right read from a passing standpoint. That was like a year and a half ago people were having those conversations. Now it's, oh, well, he need, you know he needs to make his teammates better like Dame does, which I'm still kind of, um, I don't know, like... Though I've never really understood that phrase in general, the whole t- making teammates better. Um, but I can just look at his passing and he say he's making better reads. He's making the right read more than he's not. Um, yeah, he could pass the ball a little bit better, I think. But I just say give him time. But that's the thing is we don't need him to be that point guard when you have Dame. Even Dame at 35-36 is still going to have that ability to be that floor general or somebody that makes his teammates better and could be the best player on the team without doing that if he's that high of a level of score you know what I mean like that's the thing you look at Devin Booker and Chris Paul the past couple years in Phoenix Devin Booker's been the best player but he hasn't been a player that you would look at and say okay well he's the guy who makes his teammate better instead it's 36 year old Chris Paul who's kind of the floor general but you know he's kind of the second guard but he's the guy that runs the ship. That's how I foresee things going down the line until Dame retires. Um, and then hopefully Ant can just be that guy in stretches when Dame's out or Ant's playing with the bench. Uh, you, I mean, you could be right. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong by any means. Like, he's been awesome. He's been great. I think that could be, you could very well be right that Dame will always be the leader of this team. As long as he's in Portland, like, he's going to be the guy. And Ant's going to have to follow him. Um... I just, I don't know, man. There's just something about Anthony Simons when I watch him play. I just, I just want more. And maybe I'm just being, uh, you know, being a little well, negative here. But I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, Tori. I just watch that guy and I'm like, I just, I don't see it like everyone else. I know I see the numbers. I see him put up these huge third quarters. I just, I'm not completely sold on him yet. That, I don't know why. I just, I wish we had this podcast two years ago so we could have had Anthony Simons conversations because I've always been curious, like, hmm. What did Steven think about Ant two years ago? I didn't think he was that great. Yeah. Um, so, uh, if I told you he could do this, I mean, that would I would have taken this in a oh. heartbeat. Because even I soured at Anthony Simons a couple years ago. You know, I'm not trying to put you on a spot or anything. I soured on him a couple years ago. I was like, I don't know if he can ever create at a high enough level to be a lethal scorer or somebody that makes plays for others. It's crazy how much it's changed in such short time. That's why I can't sit here and be like, I want more or anything. Because this dude went from averaging 7 a game to 25 a game in two seasons. Yeah, no. I mean, I think I think we're closer than we're making it out to be. But, like, I'm with you. I used to think Avery Simons was maybe a shooter at best. And that's about it. Like, wasn't be able to create. So, you are right. In a year and a half, like, the ability that he has shown creating with the basketball has been a great positive. Um I just thought it was a lot to give him hundred million for four years after not really playing that much in his career. And so that's why I think I expect more out of him. And he's having a great year. He's earning that contract, no doubt. Um, I just want the Blazers to be better. And I think right now, like with Damon Ant in the backcourt, they are very similar in that they're both small guards. They're both below average defenders. Like it does worry me a little bit. It's the same type of thing, even though offensively, Ant and CJ are much different. Anthony's a better shooter, more athletic. But, uh, you know, just have two small guards again. Tori just uh, worries me a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's good. It's good. I like Amber Simons. He's had a good year yeah. uh, with that. Well, I want to look at the West a little bit, too, right now. Um, yeah, we're about fourth way through the season. Um, let's just go through the Western Conference right now. You want to yeah, do that? Yeah, so the top, team, the top team has been Phoenix. Yeah. Right? Um, they got Aiton, Booker, Chris Paul. Uh, Bridges. 
yeah, Bridges is kind of their their role guy. You know, their fourth guy is just that lockdown defender, which they need because Chris Paul's lost a step there. Booker has never been a good defensive player, but with Mikael Bridges, they were able to be good enough defensively. And obviously, you got Aiton patrolling things, so you know Aiton's a better rim protector than Nurkic is, and then obviously Mikael's phenomenal. Um, so that that's kind of where they have their edge there, and they've been without Chris Paul, but they've still gotten off to a to a lead in the West. They're 16 and eight right now. Yeah. Uh, I think you're right on with all that. Uh, Mikael Bridges is probably the best on ball defender in the league. I think that uh, makes up for a lot of, a lot of the issues that you can have other places. I don't think the Blazers have that guy, uh, but yeah. maybe, maybe it's GB two, probably not. But uh, yeah, I think Bridges stacks up. You look at the Pelicans, they've been number two, they're number two right now in the West. Um, what do you think about them? I think they are a team that I think, see, I think that Pelicans are a much more of a contender than the Blazers are. Why? Their big three can't. Their big three is worse defensively than ours. I, I think. I also think Zion, if he's healthy, he's the best player out of everybody. No, I can't go there. He's good. He's good, man. He's good, man. But um, I think they're solid. They've. I read something recently that said that they were just having insane luck in terms of teams having bad shooting nights. Like, they weren't contesting threes at a higher rate. They were still giving up a lot of open threes. They give up a high percentage around the rim defensively. But teams were shooting, like, an NBA worst 33% from three against them, despite them not forcing tougher three-point shots. So it will be interesting to see if that kind of catches back up with them because they've been, like, the third best defense in the league. I don't think that'll last. I don't trust them defensively, uh, and I mean, the Blazers have beaten them when they were healthy, and we didn't have Nurkic or Dame, and that was in New Orleans, so, you know, obviously just one game isn't going to make a difference, but yeah, they got a lot of offensive firepower with CJ, who struggled this year, but CJ, Zion, and, and Brandon Ingram, but that's why those teams were, uh, I question their defense. No, I think it's fair. They also have, you know, Herbert Jones, who's a great defender, Jose Alvarado, Larry Nance, like, they got a lot of guys to back him up. I, I, so do you think Portland's better than New Orleans right now? I can't say that they're better, but I think they're in the same tier. And I still need to see more from both teams to truly establish what I think of them. Obviously, New Orleans has the better record right now. They're two and a half games ahead of Portland. They're 15 and 8. Portland's 13 and 11. Um, but New Orleans hasn't had to deal with some of the, the problems that Portland has. They've had injuries in their own right, but the schedule's been, been much easier. And. Uh, they've played more games at home than on the road. Can't say the same for the Blazers. It's 10 to 14 in that regard. Um, so that's the thing early in the season. Still a lot of different factors that uh, play into these records. That's why I do want to see more from them. Yeah, I mean, you might be right with the defense. Uh, Maybe lucky we're going to find out with that sooner or later. But you know, I just think right now, you look at their point differential, it's seven points a game. I think that's uh, very telling of why I like the Pelicans. Um the Kings, they're in fourth place. I think we can eliminate them. The Grizzlies, they're in third place. Uh, what do you think about them right now? Are is Portland better than they are? Uh, I can't put Portland above them. They proved it last year. They were solid in the playoffs last year. Got that playoff experience. They just play really good as a team. And obviously, Jaw is a hard guy to deal with. Uh, I think for them, it just comes down to... Is Jaron Jackson Jr. making shots or missing shots? He's going to play a ton of minutes because he's their best defensive player, in my opinion. Um, and then Dylan Brooks, uh, as well, is a really good defensive piece, but he struggles with efficiency also. So um, that's the thing is I don't think Memphis is a team that Portland can't beat in a playoff series. I wouldn't necessarily put Portland ahead of them in the West or, you know, in contention rankings or whatnot, but I also think Memphis, uh, just like New Orleans, is kind of in the same tier. Who's better, Ja or Dame, right now? Right now, um, Ja. Memphis is good without him, though. Portland's good without Dame. I mean, not as Memphis was what twenty and six last year without Jaw, and then they didn't have Jaw last night uh, or a couple nights ago, and they beat the Heat. And the Heat had Jimmy Butler for that game. Um, Portland beat Jaw's the Heat with good. Jimmy Butler. Portland Dame. beat the Heat with Jimmy Butler. No, Dame was Dame was in that game. Was he not in that game? Dame played that game. They played that game. In Miami, um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. He did. Yeah, yeah. So Memphis, I mean, Jaws, Jaws great, but I wouldn't put him above Dame. I think Dame, like you said, makes his teammates better, right? I I, I would take Dame's um I'd take Dame's leadership over Jaw. I would take Dame's playmaking over Jaw. Jaw, like you said, gets a lot of assists, but 
doesn't really put his teammates in spots to succeed. Dame's a better off-ball player than Jaw, much better off-ball player than Jaw. And I don't know if Jaw's enough star power to be a guy that dominates the ball as much as he does and lead that team to a championship. Whereas Dame, you know, he'll do his stuff off the dribble. He'll lead the team offensively. But you like him off the ball as well because he's a really good catch-and-shoot shooter and also an underrated cutter. So... That's yeah. what it comes down to for me. I think they're they're an interesting team, the Grizzlies, because uh, without Jaw last year against the Warriors in the playoffs, like they were lost. But when they were there, I mean, they were they took the Warriors to six. Um, I thought they'd lose to Minnesota in that first round, but they played really well in the playoffs. I uh, I like Memphis. I like Jaw. Maybe that's just me being a little higher on Jaw. All right, but uh, you said Memphis probably a little better than Portland. Let's just go through here. All right, so you got three teams better than Portland. What about Denver right now? Do you think Denver's better than Portland? Well, we're going to find out a couple days from now. So, uh, you know, Portland has a chance to tie them. If they beat Denver, they'll actually be tied at 14 and 11. And they will have the tiebreaker um, two wins to none. So, I don't know, man. It's, uh, I wouldn't put either team over over the other one right now. This is with things being so jam-packed. I think you're seeing it reflected in the standings. Uh, there's three games that separate first and ninth right now and Golden State's in 10th. Yeah. So uh, Denver, obviously, you know, Jokic, Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray is their big three. Outside of that, they don't really have anybody that impresses me. Also, defensively, their big three doesn't impress me whatsoever. Um, you know, Jokic has improved. I think he's actually a little bit underrated defensively, but he's yeah. still not good. Michael Porter Jr. sucks. Jamal Murray sucks. Uh, coming off that injury. Yeah. So that that's my question mark with them is can they defend – uh, you got Bruce Brown there and Contavious Caldwell Pope. They picked up some good role players defensively, but this year they haven't been been good on the Aaron, on yeah, the defensive Aaron, side of the ball. Aaron Gordon's always solid; like he's a solid player. Um, I know you don't like Aaron Gordon, but he's he's okay. He's not he's, great, he's but okay. he's okay. So, what's your official answer? Denver better than Portland right now? Yes or no? No. Okay, so Portland's above Denver. The Clippers, they're fourteen and eleven. Are they better than the Trailblazers right now? Uh, well, who do they have? <laughs> If Let's they have say, Kawhi and Paul George yeah, and they're healthy, yeah. yes. Okay. All right, so they got Portland at five. Dallas, they're tied with Portland 13 and 11 right now. No, there ain't no way Dallas is better. I do not like this Dallas team at all. You got Luka and you got a bunch of guys that, uh, you know, you got some solid defensive pieces. Dorian Finney-Smith's nice on that end, but you got a bunch of guys that can't do anything. They went on their run last year. I was shocked because to me, I think it's simple. You trap the ball... Get it out of Luca's hands, rotate to the first pass, and then you deny Luca and don't let him get the ball back. That's how you beat him in a playoff series. Phoenix last year just switched constantly. And of course, you know, Dallas wins that series. They make it to the Western Conference Finals. And oh, look at Dallas. They're legitimate now, right? I. I, I, I have never been high on Dallas, even when they made that run. They lost Jalen Brunson. They replaced him with Christian Wood. They don't have enough shot creation, in my opinion. And I don't think they are good enough defensively to be an elite defense either. So they're just meh. Yeah, I uh, I think Dallas is better than Portland, but I just think that's because I like Lucas so much. So uh, he's he I think he's the second best player in the NBA, and I think he's that good where he carries this team, and uh, they get, they're they're solid just because of him. But I'm with you. They have a lot of deficiencies, and it would be, would be nice to see uh, Dallas put some players around Luka Doncic that can help him out. So you got Portland above Dallas. I think you have Portland above Utah. Portland and Golden State. Golden State right now in the 10 spot, 13 and 12. Oh, God. I mean, I can't put Portland above the team that won at all last year, but they've struggled on the defensive end as well. I don't know what's going to – Golden State could be the one seed at the end of the year. I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. Golden State could keep playing like this, and if they keep playing like this, they might be in the play-in. Right. I, I, dude, I don't know. But obviously, I can't put Portland above a team with their pedigree. But yeah. I don't think, I think there's a chance Portland finishes higher than them. Two, two and 10 on the road, second worst in the NBA, right ahead of the one and 11 Magic. So, uh, yeah, I would say Golden State's better than Portland, but uh, Golden State's been really bad this season. So, based off that, Tori, you're not going to put Minnesota above them, OKC, nope. the Lakers, nope. Houston, or San Antonio. So, you got Portland at six right now. Um, I actually think that's do I have pretty. Them? I have them below the Nuggets, the Clippers. No, no, no. You have them not below the Suns, Pelicans, Grizzlies. I don't have them below the Pelicans now. Oh, you don't have. The Pelicans. I don't know what I said to that, but no, no, not below the Pelicans. Nope, not doing it. Not okay. doing it. And then uh, so Suns, Grizzlies, Clippers, Warriors. So five. You got the Wizards five. Yeah. Yeah. But all four of those teams have question marks, Stephen. 
Definitely. Do Definitely you think th- Portland can beat all those teams in a playoff series if everything goes right? No, I don't. Who do you think they lose to? Golden State and Phoenix. Okay, but do you think Portland can't do what Dallas did last year? I don't. I, they, I think they can. I they think don't, they can. They don't have a, a Luka guy that can just completely beat the Phoenix Suns by themselves. But Phoenix fell apart, dude. I don't trust Phoenix's mental makeup. That's where I am with the Phoenix Suns. I don't trust them mentally, especially the way they got absolutely demolished last year. I think they need Chris Paul. I don't think you can count on him to A, be healthy, or B, even be good at this point. He, you know, still floor general, but his scoring has fallen off, right? Like, you're talking about Booker and Aiton and Mikhail Bridges and, you know, Cam Johnson will probably be back from them, and then maybe they get something for Jay Crowder. I I can't say that this Portland team can't beat them because I'd take our top three players over theirs. And I mean, Portland has uh, played really well against Phoenix this year. So uh, you're right. I think Phoenix is just going to be better in the playoffs, but that's just me. Uh, So you got Portland five. Let's just give it five and a half. Tory Uh, right now, about a fourth of the way through the season is Portland going to finish a top five team in the Western conference. Yes. All right. I like it. Uh, All right. So again, this is the, uh, I want your answers to all these. (laughs) Oh, I, I got it below. I got it below. I still have Portland at, uh, let's see. I have them at, what, eighth in the West? You have them below. Suns, Pelicans, Grizzlies, Nuggets, Clippers, Mavericks, Warriors. Okay. okay. I, I can understand above, all those they, except the Mavericks one, but I, I okay. I, I can respect I was, that. I would say right now they're above Minnesota, but uh, I want to see what Minnesota looks like without Carl Anthony Towns. Well, I think you'll get your above, chance. Exactly. Uh, they're above the Lakers, which I didn't think before the season. And I still think that the Blazers are better than the Kings, even though the Kings have a better record. So I got them at eight, which is, uh, again, higher than I thought they'd be. So I am very excited uh, about the Trailblazers. So that brings me to this. What would be the grade for your team this year? About a fourth of the way through, 24 games in. I got the Blazers at a B. I wanted to go B plus, Tori, but 24th in defensive rating, knocked it down a little bit. They're still negative in the net rating. Um Right, you look at the net rate. Let's see what I had the numbers up here, right here. Uh, they're negative 0.7 net. That bothers me. I don't like that. And then they are still uh, 7 and 9 against teams that are 500 or above. I think that's solid. Um, but there's been a couple games I could have won. So for me, that's a B. I wanted to give it a B plus because, like I said, I had them at 10. They're at 8. I got to be excited about it. There's a lot of things. We talked about this last time. I was very positive about it. Shaden Sharp looks really good. Uh, Dane looks a lot better now that he's back healthy. Anthony Simons, we've touched a lot on this podcast, how he's looked. I think there's a lot of building blocks here. Um, but there's still a couple things I'm negative on. Chauncey Billups, I still want to see some adjustments out of him. And uh, so I think for that, it's a B, solid B, close to a B plus. What about you? I'm giving him a B plus. Honestly, I was thinking A minus because uh, I look at it as on December 6th, they are three games out of first after having the hardest first 24 games when you take into account injuries and who they've played. Injuries and who they've played, as well as rest. And they're still three games out of first? I, missing missing Dame for half the season? And you got Grant and Ant playing like this? Yeah, you got some things to clean up, for sure. Like, I can't go A+, plus, but I mean, I couldn't have expected anything better than this given the stuff that they've gone through this year to be 13-11. I would have taken that in a heartbeat before the season. Dude, if they had everyone healthy the entire season, I still would have taken 13 and 11. So, uh, yeah, B plus. I'll go B plus. You're probably right. I should probably give a B plus. But it's like I said a a couple podcasts ago, like, I changed my expectations. Like, I thought Blazers, now they have to get into the playoffs. If they don't get into that final playoff seed, like, it's a failure of a season where before it's like, I think they're playing team and that's about it. So I think that's where my B came from. But you're probably right. It's probably B plus because – this team has been really good. And if you told me before the start of the year, 24 games in, you're 13 and 11, I would have taken that in a heartbeat. Like, I thought they'd have like seven, eight wins. So they've been definitely above uh, my expectations. So, again, you're probably right. B plus, I just uh, leaned on the negative side for that one. Yeah, yeah. No, B ain't negative, man. B's good. They're having a, they're having a, they're having a good year. They've dealt with a ton. They have. I thought these guys were gassed in November. 16 games in 29 days and... You had a game where, like, Justice Winslow's playing 46 minutes and Ant's playing crazy minutes. Some of that's on Chauncey, but these guys were gassed and missing Dame and 
they were still above 500. I, I love it. And you're some, I think the Blazers will be a top five team because they have one of the easiest schedules in the league left. And a lot of lottery teams that maybe are trying to lose games a little harder because tank season is going to start at some point and it's probably going to be early with Victor Wenbanyama on the horizon. So uh, that that's where my confidence is in regards to the Blazers finishing top five comes in from. I think tank season is already starting. Uh, you look at the Spurs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think after December, like you said, the schedule eases up. This could be a completely different conversation uh, in December. Like the Blazers could be really good. Or if they're really bad, I think that's where their, their grade goes down. But I think B plus probably about right. Uh, real quick here before we shut down the podcast, uh, our fourth of the way through the season awards, what has been your biggest surprise? Mine, I'm going to go first here, uh, jumpy here. Mine's yeah, a Jeremy Grant. Mine's a Jeremy Grant shooting the three. Forty-six percent shooting the three. He has been such a revelation for the three-point line for me. Thirty-five percent coming into the year in his career. I I'm at the point now with Jeremy Grant where I fully expect him to make every single three-pointer he makes, and I think that's like the biggest compliment I can give him. Like coming into the year, I thought he was going to miss every shot. Now he's making every shot. The shot where he just catches at his head and then shoots it without bringing it down. That shot is unbelievable, Tori. Like, you know this. Like, that shot is so hard. You have to be so strong to be able to catch the ball right there and just shoot right away. Like, that shot impresses me every single time he does it. I can't believe he does it so well. But um, Jeremy Grant was awesome. But specifically, that three-point shooting, man, that's been the biggest surprise for me. Yeah. Um, honestly, for me, nothing's been too surprising. And the most surprising thing is actually a negative Josh Hart not being more aggressive offensively has been the most surprising thing to me because I can't explain it. Uh, this this dude, yeah, he's playing as the fifth option in the offense, but there's been times where he'll have open threes and he'll just pass them up for no reason. He'll have a driving lane and he'll pass it up. Last year, this dude was just like hurtling his body into defenders and he still will do it from time to time, but constantly just hurling his body into defenders, finishing through traffic, averaging 20 points per game in a Blazer uniform. Yes, it was a small sample size in a, um, and it was an easy schedule during those 11 games he played, but his scoring average has gotten more than cut in half. So that was actually the biggest surprise to me. I thought he would be more aggressive this year. I thought he would look for his own offense a little bit more this year. And uh, I'm a little bit surprised as to how much he's kind of taken a backseat. Well, that was going to go to our next category, was the biggest letdown. Because I have Josh Hart as my biggest letdown, the way he's going on the opposite side. So think of something positive. It doesn't have to be a surprise. Maybe think of something more like uh, you've been most excited about. All right, think about that one. Most excited. Because I'm going to go into Josh Hart a little bit too. I think he has been such he's been such a letdown in shooting the basketball. And watching him in person, like he is wide open on threes and he does not look to take them. He's shooting two three pointers a game this season. Like that number needs to be at least four. He needs to be a threat from behind the three point arc because I understand that he is one of the best rebounding guards in the league and it's very helpful because Jeremy Grant not a great rebounder. Josh Hart basically rebounds like the power forward on the team. He plays like a four. Jeremy Grant plays more like the three. But I need Josh Hart to be able to shoot the basketball. He's shown the ability to at least be a threat on the outside. I think for Portland to take any type of step, he's going to have to take a big step on the offensive side. So that has been a humongous letdown for me is Josh Hart shooting the basketball. I think he's been great, like really great in certain areas of his game. He's always been a decent ball handler that can create for others a little bit on the fast break gets those steals, run those one-on-three fast breaks. I love it. Like you said, barrel into players. He does a lot of good things. But, man, I need to see him shoot the basketball a little bit. So um, yeah, that's yeah. my that's my biggest letdown. Give me give me your uh, most pleasant, happy thought about the Blazers. Though. Yeah, well, actually, I just remembered my biggest surprise. This is actually bigger than Josh Hart's. Uh, Yusuf Nurkic being a three-point sniper is probably the most surprising thing. He's 15 for 35 on the season. Yeah, small sample size, but his shot looks absolutely legit. His form is good. When he misses, he's not missing by much. Like, there's nothing about the way he shoots the ball that makes me think it's not sustainable. I always thought he could become a a bit of a three-point shooter. I was just sitting here saying, okay, if he could become, you know, 34% or something, that'd be great. Right now, he's shooting 43% from behind the three-point line. 15 for 35. He's shooting almost two a game. So that that has been the most pleasant surprise. Uh, over under to thirty and a half percent at the end of the year for Yusuf Nurkic on threes. Uh man, you got you always got these betting lines. Bet I just come up with a top of the head. I know. Yeah, I'm, 
Yeah, you know it's good because I don't know. Um... I even think it's over. I, I'm with you. I think Nurk, he, Nurk, has, Nurk learned that he has to shoot the basketball from deep to stay relevant in this type of NBA. Like, you can't just be a back-to-the-basket guy. And I know Nurk's more than that. Like, he can dribble and make a pass to somebody. But when he scored, it was all about backing your guy in and just dumping your shoulder and trying to draw a foul. Now he's learned to actually like shoot the basketball. I think that was out of necessity, and I really enjoy that at Nurk. So I think it's actually going to be uh, above 30 and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like right around there, man. Uh, yeah. I would probably go a shade under. I think I'll end up like 37 to 38%. It's just hard to hard to say because we don't have a sample size of him shooting the ball at this clip you know, for a, for a season. So, uh, you know, I'll take the under, I'll be the negative one on this one. I'll say 37 and a half is where he ends up. But for him, man, I just think it's confidence. It's no longer the feeling where you're like, why is he shooting threes? It's like, okay, well, Nurk, yeah, take the wide open three. Go ahead, man. That's because he shot the ball well enough this year. So, you know, if he misses a bunch and all of a sudden he's down around 33, 34%, then yeah, maybe you start questioning it a bit, but it was almost like, in previous years, he didn't know if he should shoot an open three. And now this year, he's like, okay, well, you're going to leave me open. I'm going to drain it. And I think that goes a long way for a shooter. I uh, totally agree with you. I, I love the way Nurk's been doing it. And with that, that is going to wrap up this episode of the Believe in Blazers podcast presented by Bet Online. For my co-host, Tori Jones, catch him at Tori Jones YT on Twitter. I am Stephen Vaughn. Catch me at Stephen underscore VON on Twitter. Hit us up on YouTube. Rate, review, subscribe, do all those type of things. Hit us up on anywhere. We love to hear the comments, love to read them. We do read them, so uh, that is great. And for everybody around Rip City, have a great week, and let's go Blazers.